So it's not very often that we see the release of a legendary racket. But what truly makes a racket legendary? Well, to achieve legend status, a racket can't just play well in the hands of us mortals. It really needs to stand out at the top, top level. Legendary rackets must win slams. The Wilson K-Factor 612 or the Bablat Aero Pro Drive Original, the Head Pro Tour 280, or more specifically, the Pro Stock PT57A. So what was the last legendary racket? Well, in 2011, Yonex released their first modern classic, the V-Core 95D, endorsed by a washed up post-surgery Leighton Hewitt the 95D just sold like spoiled milk. No one bought it. But in 2012, Yonex signed Stanislas Warinka, an endorsement deal that would mark the beginning of the Stanimal, a slam hungry monster which ate a diet made up exclusively of goat meat. Wawa would dump his head prestige pro for the Yonex 95D, and under the tutelage of the great coach, Magnus Norman, Stan would prove his worth by taking Djokovic deep into five sets at the 2013 Australian Open. One year later, he would win that tournament. And two more Grand Slam victories later, Stan had amassed a huge fan base full of Fidel fans who just liked to watch Djokovic lose. Me included. That was the copium we needed. So in unison, we all chanted, the core 95D. And so prices for that racket have risen towards $1,000 for clean examples of the racket. And while most manufacturers today have dropped their 95 score inch option, Yonex still makes V-Core 95. But do the more recent 95s really have that specialness that fueled the 95D to legend status? Well, you can still see multiple generations of V-Core 95 on tour today. Stan still uses his 95D. Shavo left Wilson for the SV95 and it looks like he's flip-flopped a bit, but I think he's back to it. And Marcus Jerome seems to upgrade to the newest V-Core 95 every single year. And not only that, but the V Core 95 seems to have earned cult status as a mainstay racket in the hands of the YouTube icon Karu from My Tennis HQ. And the SV95 has been a hugely important racket in my own racket journey. So this was my first new racket since playing my entire junior career with the Bablet Aero Pro Drive. So at the time, the SV95 was known as more of a power 95. So it really helped me develop a lot of aggression and more natural power in my own baseline game. And spin is quite insane with that SV95, even by today's standards. But what's always made the VCore 95 special is their combination of maneuverability and plow through, allowing the user to generate huge racket head speeds without sacrificing that on center stability and plow through that we love from these like player specs. And even though it's an epic frame, it's just not without its flaws. Tough thing is with the SV95, there's like a weird hot spot. It's like a super sweet spot in the lower hoop, which absolutely catapults the ball out if you happen to catch it wrong. Today, I'd honestly never stand for such inconsistencies in the string bed, but back in 2018, there honestly weren't that many good rackets on the market. It really feels like we've entered a golden age with all the choice we have. That said, now. it is such a connected feeling rack. So by the end of the 2010s, basically everyone had gotten sick of these stiff power spin rackets, and we were begging manufacturers to save our arms with softer flexing frames. Of course, no one heard us louder and clearer than Wilson when they released the Clash, but Yonex heard us too. From there, I moved on to the 2018 V-Core 95. So for the 2018 oh. V-Core 95, the stiffness was dropped from 65 oh. strung down to 62. There were also some slight adjustments to the beam design, which completely completely fixed that hot spot in the lower hoop. 
You really notice that lower flex on court. There's so much more dwell time with the 2018 version. In my opinion, the 2018 Vcore 95 is the best feeling tennis racket of the past 10 years, if not even a little further back. It feels so solid, so sturdy, like one giant chunk of uniform graphite. This particular Vcore is customized right to my spec too. One problem with a lot of these 310 gram 95s is they tended to feel a little bit anemic. Customization was absolutely essential with most users adding weight at the three and nine o'clock locations to bump up that torsional stability and many more like myself adding weight at 12 for an even higher swing weight. So if you have the patience to really tinker with that frame, to dial it in to your game, you are awarded with one of the best playing rackets of modern times. And even though it flexes a little bit softer, there is still so much power and spin to go around. So for 2021, there was an emphasis on making the 95 easier to use. They dropped the swing weight, they thickened the beam width, and they stiffened the layup. Sure, it seems like they sold more units, but to a 2018 user like myself, the feel was simply ruined. It felt brassy again, and I'd even go so far to say is it felt pure drive-ish, which is like the worst thing you could possibly say about a 95 square inch racket. So this video would not be possible without Direct Tennis. Direct Tennis is a super easy to use and convenient app designed to link stringers with players in your local area. If you're a stringer and looking to expand your customer base, Direct Tennis provides a direct link between you and players. If you're a player, Direct Tennis is a very easy way to find much more reliable and fast stringers in your area rather than just going to your local big stores. Direct Tennis also includes a catalog for various stringers in your area so you can see what strings are available. If you're not quite sure what strings are available, Direct Tennis has built-in features to help you learn more about strings. They're also partnered with a bunch of major manufacturers, including Yonex, which brings me to an epic giveaway. So if you'd like to win three sets of Poly Tour Drive, make sure you're a subscriber to this channel. Leave a comment in the video description below telling me about your favorite tennis string and follow Direct Tennis on Instagram. From there, we'll choose a winner and you'll get to try one of Yonex's newest polyester strings. So for 2023, there have been some big technical changes to the V-Core 95. I was pretty worried because on paper, it seemed like Yonex was going more in that user-friendly direction with an even thicker beam, a super wide head shape that makes the frame look almost like a grandma racket. I really had my thoughts, but boy was I wrong. Suddenly, it's like we're getting the best of all worlds. Got the feel from the 2018 with performance more like the SV or the 2021. So the flex is now softened, so we're going back to that amazing ball pocketing that we felt in the 2018 version. The brassiness of the SV and the 2021s are completely gone, and this thing feels super, super solid again. You get that spin potential from the new V-Core 100 and the 98, but none of the unpredictability that we saw with those frames. The other thing I have to mention is the sound of this 95. It feels so solid. It sounds like an absolute cannon. There's an absolutely lovely throat flex in this frame, which really helps accentuate the ball pocketing effect without adding unpredictability in the upper hoop. This reminds me a lot of the reviews that I've read on the DR98, which is another borderline legendary racket. These 95s always felt like they needed a little jolt of lead tape to help wake them up. And for once, it feels like this 2023 V-Core 95 plays great stock. But that wider head shape gives you a lot of extra hitting area where it counts oh. towards the tip of the frame. It gives you a wider oh. spin window, which makes top spin balls feel oh. heavier than ever before. No. That extra room in the head has another great benefit. It leads to a lot more forgiveness on off-center shots. Huh. 
This thing has so much more forgiveness than previous versions, it's crazy. Previous versions would really flutter in the hand if you couldn't maintain a central contact point, but now stability is much improved without any significant drop-offs in playability outside the sweet spot. So for 2023, Yonex seems to have merged the best elements of the previous Vcore 95s into one single cohesive package. And I honestly think it's a very fun racket to hit with for a variety of levels. Should it be a match day choice for intermediate players? Well, probably not. But even if you are more at that 3.5 level, I don't think you need to be too intimidated by the head size. The V-Core 95 is incredibly rewarding to rally with, and I think it's more than forgiving enough for literally anyone to enjoy on the court. It's such a versatile frame that I also don't think it lends itself particularly well to any one game style. You can play amazing aggressive tennis with this racket, but it's also got enough power to counter punch as long as you can maintain some decent racket head speed. But is this a legendary racket? Well, no, not unless Marcus Jerome or Carousel can manage to win a Grand Slam with it, since it does look like Chapeau's gone back to his SV95. But I don't think that really matters. I think we should buy this racket for what it is today, because it's an amazing racket. We don't want the V-Core 95 to die with this generation. This is probably the best 95 square inch racket that you can buy new on the market today. And it honestly really got me excited to go and play some tennis. Let me know if you've got any questions about this racket or wanna hear some comparisons in the comments section. We'll see you next time.